Welcome to today's 10 minute core workout. This workout is perfect for tacking on to the end of the run, end of a run or any other endurance training routine because you'll already be warmed up. You'll have already engaged your core during your primary activity and then you can really take it to exhaustion and really push yourself at the end of your workout. So we're gonna be doing some standing exercises. We're also gonna take it to the floor so we've got a good mix of things. I am going to be using a dumbbell and a stability ball, but you can actually do this workout with just one of them or with neither of them. So I'll talk you through some, some modifications or adjustments as we go. We're gonna start with a standing exercise. Now, if you're familiar with a bicycle crunch, we're gonna be doing a bicycle crunch that's standing. So I'm gonna show you quickly first what we'll be doing. So I want you to start by really engaging your core, tucking your hips, your pelvis slightly under, slight bend in the knees. If you want a dumbbell, you can hold it at your chest like so, but otherwise, uh, just, just do it with your hands up behind your near ears, kind of like you would for a standard bicycle crunch. So what you'll be doing is alternating legs. And as you lift, you'll shift your, your body weight to one side, lift the opposite knee. You'll twist your torso and take your opposite elbow towards that lifted knee. Stop in the center, take it to the other side. So we'll be continuing to alternate like that. Our next exercise, you can put the dumbbell down or you can go ahead and hold it in place. It's not really being used specifically during this workout, but it can be nice, a kind of balancing help on the one side. The next one is a side crunch, standing, same thing, tuck those hips under, engage that core, one arm behind your ear, the other leg extended out to the side. You're going to crunch your leg up and in as you crunch your arm towards your knee. So we're staying on one side and then we'll switch to the other. Those are the two ones I'm gonna introduce just here at the beginning, because they're a little bit different. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get this 10 minute workout started. So we're starting with that tailbone tucked under and we're doing our standing crunch. You wanna keep your core engaged. Tailbone tucked, knees slightly bent. Go at your pace. You really wanna focus on tightening up that core as you lift your knee and twist your torso. We're halfway done here. Not too bad, right? If you can, try to touch that elbow to that knee. Otherwise, you can keep it shorter range of motion. You can set down the dumbbell. The main thing is really make sure that tailbone stays tucked under so that you're engaging your entire abdominal cavity. 10 seconds here, then we're taking it to the right side, those side crunches. All right, if you choose to hold the dumbbell, hold it in your left hand, arm up, and we're crunching to the side. Lightly touching that toe to the ground. Keeping your torso upright and tall really focusing on tightening up the obliques and the hip flexors of your right side. You'll also notice it in your hips, your left hip, your left glute, as you maintain an upright position. Switch to the other side, leg out, crunch it in. Lightly touching that toe down, so it's a controlled motion. Tailbone under, core tight. Next, we're gonna be taking it to the floor in four seconds here. And take it to the floor. We're doing a quadruped hip extension with a crunch. So hands and knees on the ground, extend one arm and the opposite leg fully, then bring them to the center. You're staying on the one side. So it's a bit of a balance exercise. Keep that tailbone tucked, that core tight. Five seconds, then we're switching sides. Two, one, switch sides. So extend and crunch in the center. We 
We're taking it to a plank next. So we're getting everything nice and warm, working everything between your hips and your shoulders. Three seconds here and take it to a plank. I'm gonna do a full body, full extension plank, palms under shoulders, core tight, straight line of the body from heels to head. You can always take it to your knees. You can always take it to your forearms. We've got 45 seconds total that we're doing. Then a quick little break before we switch to our side plank. So 15 seconds here. If you need to set those knees down, by all means do so. Core tight, core tight. No hips shooting up towards the ceiling. Three, two, one. Nice little break as we get set up for our side plank. So 30 seconds per side. Forearm on the ground, legs extended. You can put one knee on the ground if that's helpful. We're gonna take it up starting now. If you can extend that arm up towards the sky, by all means do so. The main thing is make sure there is a line going straight down your forehead, all the way down to in between your legs. Nice, straight, strong, holding it tight. We got 10 seconds here. Hang tight, you got it. Five seconds. Two, one, and switch sides. Opposite side, taking it up immediately, core tight, tailbone slightly tucked forward. If you can reach that arm up, you can always put a knee on the ground for support. Slight modification. Elbow should be under shoulder. Stack tight. Five seconds here. Three, two, one. All right. Slight break as we set up. We will be doing same thing, side plank, but we will be lifting and lowering our hips. So you can do it on your knees as well. Go ahead, lower those hips, raise them up. Core is tight. Hips do not need to touch the ground. It's just a slight engagement of the obliques as you straighten that body back up. Couple seconds here. And switch to the opposite side. Same thing. So getting that side plank and then just engaging those hips, dropping the hips, raising them up again. Movement coming from the strength of the obliques and the core. 10 seconds here. Then we've got a bridge march. You can pick up your dumbbell for this if you want. Take it to your back. If you want to use the dumbbell, set it across your hips like so to increase the weight. You're gonna take your hips up towards the ceiling. You're gonna raise one leg like you're marching. Set it down, down again, up, opposite side. So it's a bridge with a balance and a march. If you don't want the dumbbell, whoops, set it aside. Just put your hands on your hips. Nice controlled movements. We're using the ball next if you want to. Otherwise, you're gonna stick with a bridge on the ground. Just holding the bridge up in the air for a stable exercise. All right, grab your ball. We're doing a bridge using the ball. Feet on the ground, feet on the ball. Arms on the ground for stability. Hips up into the air and hold tight. You're just holding this position here, engaging your glutes, your hips, your low back, your abdominals, holding the position tight. Two, one, quick break. If you're doing this on the ground, your feet just remain on the ground and you're doing a static hold of the bridge. Couple seconds here and we're repeating. 
and up. Hold it tight. Straight line from shoulders to knees if you can. It's challenging with the added balance challenge. Five seconds here. All right, break. You're going to put that ball between your legs. If you don't have the ball, no problem. It's just helping with some inner thigh work here. Ball between your legs, lift it up off the ground. Lower back engage, roll your shoulders up off the ground, extend those arms, and you're going to do 100. So just pump your hands here. Holding your entire core in tight. Five seconds here. You get a break, break. Quick break, roll it down. You wanna make sure your entire core is engaged during that exercise and roll it up. 15 more seconds right here. Four seconds. And we've got a back extension on the ball. You can do this on the ground doing a Superman instead. So you're just pr pressing your hips into the ball. You're rolling slightly down over the ball and extending your back up. You're just hanging with me here. Feet planted, staying in place. A nice, easy way to work your lower back. You're not overdoing it. You're not leaning too far over the front of the ball. You're not extending way up into the air and putting too much pressure on your low back. You're just maintaining a nice, easy back extension here. We have 10 seconds, and then we are done with the whole workout. Five seconds here. Three, two, one, and take it down. That was your 10-minute core workout it's been a lot of fun. I hope you are feeling good about what you just did. I hope you're not feeling like it was too much stress. I hope you did tack it onto the end of a run. That way you can really burn out those abdominal muscles at the end so that you're not fatiguing yourself before you go running or go out to do something else. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you back soon.